Scholars who study the polygraphy and orthography of early Quranic manuscripts are finding that early versions of the Quran that possibly predate Uthman were still in production as late as the early 8th century. Let's take a look at their findings right now. Today, we will continue to unpack this discussion concerning why the Sana'a manuscript is known as the Palimpsest. Dr. J. Yeah, this is a fascinating thing. I remember when this was first discovered. I, I don't know if you remember this. This is quite a few years ago, back in the 19th. Uh, well, we heard about it really in the 1980s, 1990s, and then 2000 when the when the article came out by Lester on this. But uh, we this has been going on this this whole f uh, furore about what does the implications of the Sana manuscript uh, if it is uh, a the earliest manuscript in existence, the fact that it didn't have any dots or vowels, the fact that it had uh, orthography that was that was unique. And the dating, of course, was the first question that was asked. What are the dates? What are the dates? What are the dates? This, uh, and that's why you, the carbon dating that, that we've just looked at, the carbon dating shows that this could be even pre-Islamic. Uh, and so that kind of shot that whole thing to pieces. So we had to go back, and you need to go back to the people who have been looking at it the longest. And so what we're going to do now in this episode, I want to just do some quotes that have come out from different scholars, and then look at Shoemaker and see how he comes. I want to look at Doroche. Uh, I would look at uh, others like a Sellard uh, or another. Uh, I would like to also look at Sedegi and Bergman, the ones that were, that were pushing the carbon dating. And I like just look at their quotes, because even what they say paleographically and orthography, orthoph orthographically, when you look at the orthography, when you look at the paleography, you can see that you will have to push it back further than what the radiocarbon datings are saying. That's right. Now, so let's go to some of these quotes. Doroche is probably the best to start with because he is the one that is considered to be the world's leading scholar on archaic manuscripts. He's been working on it the longest. He is French. He is from uh, Paris. He was. He works at the Bibliothèque Nationale and. And so in, in Paris, so he is the one that has looked at, and the, the Petropolitanus manuscript is one of his prides and joy. And of course, he's written all about the Uthmanic recension. He re talks about the Uthmanic manuscripts. So that's one of his books that came out. But he doesn't agree with the Uthmanic paradigm. He doesn't agree with the the Noldekishwali paradigm. Not because he 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 does he has a presupposition not to disagree, or that he comes to a predilection to disagree. It's because of what science is telling him, because of the orthography, because of the paleography. So let's. I'm going to go to one of his quotes, and this is from his book in 2014, where he talks about the Sana and the dating. He says one can date the Sana uh, manuscript. Let me just... One can date the Sana of Palimpsest, I'm saying, by looking at the format. Now, Palimpsest, as we said earlier, two different layers. That's right. One, one is, is washed, washed off. off. Yeah. The other, once it's washed off, it has to be It has to be then rewritten, or it is written, written over top. And once you write over top, obviously, you can. there is a different text. There's a different manuscript, uh, a different script. And so that's what we're, we're, we're referring to. And he says, one can date the Sana'a of Palimpsest by looking at the format, the orthography, and the paleography with which the Quran was written on this parchment, especially its underlying layer. That's the lower text. Doroche dates the Quranic text that was originally written on it. That means the lower text, the, the first script, uh, because it is a polypsis. And he says this Sana'a manuscript contains two texts at once, an original text, that's the lower one, that has been erased, but that can be still be read. And that's true. It's, it's still easy. And what happens is when you wash it off, at that time it can't be read. Because you wash it off, you get all the ink off. Hundreds of years later, the ink starts to bleed through. Once the ink starts to bleed through then, of course, you can read it. And that's why they knew that this was a polymcist. Mm -hmm. And so he says, the, when in the original text, the lower, and the presence of surah titles and decorative features between the surahs indicate a later date. He says in the late 7th or early 8th century. So that's the date he puts it. So roughly around Abdul Malik al-Hajjaj's time, 
of the Malik, 685 to 705. Uh, and Hajjaj, the same thing. So early, he most of it, in Darosh, when push and comes to shove, he did say 705. Let's go, let's say 790 to, sorry, 690 to 705. That's the date he puts it in. Again, that's not 650. This is a good 40 to 50 years later. Sadeg and Bergman, who are the ones that did the radiocarbon dating, notice what they what they say when they look at it paleographically and orthographically. Interestingly, they don't give the same date now. This is what they say. They claim that have to have identified short vowel marks in the text, which, if accurate, as Doroche had noted, would further indicate a later dating of this chronic manuscript. So by looking at the vowelization, they realize that this does not fit then what we see in the radio coverage. So even they are willing to say <laughs> that that there is a disconnect. And let me explain to people uh, what, what this meant. Uh, you know it, of course. Uh, uh, we've, as we have shown many times in the past when we did the series on the chronic manuscripts, that the Quran, when it was written, the rasm itself, the structure of words, does not really have dotting or uh, markations to help with the pronunciation. Okay, I'm going to simplify it, how to pronounce it. And what Sadiqi is saying is that you can use some of these dots that help with the pronunciation as a proof that it was added later when they began to discover that not everybody is able to remember it that way or read it that way. So these dots can help you when you're reading it or memorizing it, how to pronounce it correctly. Yeah, and they needed to do that because yeah. or the earlier script, the Arabic script in the seventh century only had about between 14 and 16 consonantal characters. Right. Skeletal text, we call it, or consonantal text, consonantal script. And one little shape like this could be five different letters. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they needed to introduce these dots. Now, five dots, three above and two below, were really only introduced in the 8th century and were only canonized around the 9th century. So that's why Bergman and Sedegia said, we need to be careful about just taking the radiocarbon dating. Though they're not saying this in this quote. What they're saying is, let's look at the paleography, let's look at the orthography. Because it has these vowelizations, because it has these dots, uh, diacritical marks, it must be at a later date. Uh, Eleanor Salar is another scholar uh, and let's see what she says. She's said. wonderful. I love, by the way, her um, writings. She has a Twitter thread that she uses usually to interact with many of the writings uh, concerning Quranic manuscripts. Okay, so, so you know images. her personally, not having face-to-face, -face, but you've seen her writings herself. That's right, yeah. So you know her better than I do. And she says she looked at the original text of this palimpsest, and she compared it with other manuscripts from the Sana'a connections, such as the Dam uh, 01-29-1. And this is what she concludes, that based on their similarities, uh, that the dating for the, the she would date it to the early 8th century uh, because of the fact that they're so close to these other manuscripts that are dated to that period. So that's why she did, looking with other manuscripts and comparing them, you then get that date. Again, that's the early 8th century. What about others? Well, uh, Doroche wades into this whole discussion when he goes and he says that the upper text is made uh, probably mid 8th century. Uh, the upper text of the Sana'a manuscript, he says, is also a Quran, which he identifies as a copy of the text made not before the middle of the 8th century. So now we're talking about the upper text. Remember the lower text was beginning of the 8th century. The upper text, that's the one that's mm -hmm. uh, you've been washed off and then you write over top. He puts it to the mid 8th century. So Doros continues. When he said, we're looking at both texts. According to Rosh, what we have in the under text, that's the lower text of the Salah manuscript, is a witness to a different early version of the Quran. Ooh, two, 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 two. So he's already talking about two different Qurans here. One is an early version. And then he continues, only once, the quote-unquote Uthmanic text. So that's the lower Let's text. Let's say what he's talking is a pre-standard Quran. Okay. Pre-standard. He's yeah. calling it Uthmanic because that's what the standard Islamic narrative, that's what all the, yeah. the scholars say. But what he's saying is this Uthmanic text had achieved dominance, uh, but it, it was then erased and replaced with the canonical version of the Quran in the middle of the 8th century. Bingo. Well, already he's now saying that there are two completely different Qurans. That's why it had to be erased. That's why it had to be changed. And let me say something, Ajay. As someone who grew up as a Muslim, this is taboo to hear something like this. Are you telling me the Quran evolved? Yeah, that's exactly what he said. Let's continue yeah. the quote, because he says that very thing. Thus, he continues, it would appear that the non-canonical versions, non-canonical, that means not the one that's became the standard. These are ones that are different than the standard, the canonical one. 
So the non-canonical versions of the Quran were still being produced as late, still being produced as late as 700 CE. That's the 8th century, and were only eliminated eventually through the effects of or the efforts of Abdul Malik and Al Hajjaj to establish a particular version of the Quran as canonical. That's Durro saying this. Remember, he's right. the world authority on this. So what's and that's why Shoemaker's quoting him because you don't get somebody better than Darosh. and that the fact that Shoemaker oh, quotes him is wonderful. Yeah. yeah, you need someone who is actually looking beyond just the carbon dating and saying, "Let's do a little bit more elbow work here." That's too simple. And we also start from the same premise as we said over and over again. When you start from that premise, folks, you're only talking about the skin. Let's talk about the ink. Let's talk about the ink. Wonderful. Now, what I want to do next. In the next episode, I want to do a comparison between those two scripts. I want to look and see what had changed. If, as we see Dorosh is saying, as Salad is saying, as Sadegi and Berman are both all saying that this is an 8th century upper text, possibly mid 8th century, uh, early 8th century lower text, let's even say late 7th century, I'm willing to go that. That's fine. The fact is there's two different texts, that means there must be an evolution between the two different scripts. Amen. Let's see if that's the case. That's what we're going to start with in the next episode. Wonderful. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for joining us. This is Al Fadi over and out. God bless you. Take care. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.